Women Up Radio, designed to facilitate women's empowerment, improve your career, develop your talents, incorporate your passions, achieve fulfillment and success. Hello, this is Women Up Radio, supporting Empower Women. And today we're talking about women in sport and the benefits of sport disciplines for business and career changes, also startups, tech and big data. I'm joined in the studio by my guest Sarah Denance, twice world champion and Olympic medalist in fencing. Sarah has transformed into a digital native and she's passionate about the world of startups and innovation. So welcome to the programme, Sarah. Hello, thank you for welcoming me uh, to your, uh, your programme. So can I start by asking you to tell me about your fencing career? How did you start and how did you keep focused for so many years and also remain at the top for so long? I started fencing, I was uh, almost four years old. Uh, in fact, my parents uh, wanted to have a daughter since uh, their first child. Yeah. Uh, I have three older brothers. Uh-huh. And so my mother, especially, especially, wanted me to be the, um, how do you say that, the stereotype of the, of the girl. The, yeah. the girl. And um, so every Wednesday I practiced dancing, uh, classic dancing. I just hated it. <laughs> and one Wednesday my teacher was sick. And since this moment, my elder brother and I uh, keep on pretending to go to the dancing school. But in fact, we didn't. I mean, until the day my my mom uh, knew about it. This is how I start fencing. And I love fencing. I love the fencing, especially um, my three brothers were fencers. And I love when they shouted... um, like, uh, you know, warriors after scoring a point. Yes. Uh, this is how I really start to, to love that sport. And I knew I wanted to be a warrior too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> after when I was 18, uh, with my mom, we decided to, for me to, left, to leave uh, Guadeloupe and go to Bordeaux in South of France. Yes. Uh, because all the competition were in Europe and uh, that was really tiring. And uh, when I started my fencing professional career, I was uh, really good uh, with, I mean, a strong mental, fun and good uh, on my mind. And when I was uh, 16, Laura Fissel, my um, ex-colleague and now French uh, sports minister, won the first gold uh, Olympic women EP. Yeah. So I understood. I understood uh, everything could be and would be possible with work. I knew I would uh, win mine and uh, my Olympic medal, and so I wanted to. The discipline involved in a sports career, and particularly something like that, I mean, it's phenomenal. So how did you manage mm-hmm. to keep going? Weren't there times when you just wanted to give up and to, to come back to a normal life? Uh, it's, it's normal. Whatever your job is, Sometimes uh, when you still not succeeded as you wanted to, I mean, uh, it's normal that you are fed up and that you just want to give it all up. Um, it's for, I don't know, a job seeker, an entrepreneur, uh, uh, some, some, wh- wh- whatever your pre- preoccupation is. And that's a good point, in fact. Uh, what, what you do and especially failure affects you. That means you really want to succeed. Of course, there were moments I wanted to have holidays uh, than uh, be with my group or having a good moment with my friends. I don't know, uh, drinking a, a good glass of wine before going to a nightclub, for example. Uh, and, and the worst for me is that was uh, to not see my nephews grow up. But I knew I was doing all that for some something I really wanted to. Yeah. When when you are a professional athlete, you you train a lot, and yeah. of course, you want to be on the first step of, of the podium. But um, there's only one one first place, yeah. one first step. Uh, all famous athletes I know or sport model I've follow never six at uh, the first competition until the last one. Yeah. Um, 
failure is in the process. In fact, we yeah. all know what that failure allows you to understand what was wrong, what you need to improve and to understand your opponent better. To, to be on the first step, you need to have a, a mind step and absolutely stay focused on your goal, whatever happened in your real life. Yeah. You have your plan, your goals for next year, next, uh, for this year, this month, the, the week, today. Uh, with your competition results, you improve your plan. Sometimes you feel bad, sometimes you feel numb to everything, but you know why you, you make all these sacrifices. You, you know that nothing will make you feel happier than and your goal. So you, you can't stop until you need to stop or want to stop. Right. As long as you follow your routine, it could be okay. So what are the biggest challenges for athletes who want to reach the top? Of the first injuries. Uh, <laughs> yes, injuries, because it's even federal. I, I, I don't know athletes who, who have never had the problem of injuries. Because of injuries, so motivation and sometimes depression. Another is the support of from your family or your friends and federation, and especially the life after sport or when you are going to finish your career, you know, the life without sport. And so the bad consequences is many times depression or drug or things like this. So because you need that, I don't know the right word, you need that ex excitement. excitement. Uh, the excitement. Okay. It's, it's like a drug in your, in your blood. So yes, yes, I so. think. You understand what, what, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's, it's your, your okay. thing. You need the excitement. So one of the biggest challenges is if you're injured or if you've got to stop, you don't have that excitement anymore. And yes. So do you think in sport there's a difference in the way men and women athletes are viewed and the way that they're treated? I live, I live in this world, so yes, of course, <laughs> there's, a, there's a difference. Men are strong and practice real sports, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Women are pretty and it's funny to watch them practice. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes I heard that and many times, in fact. We use, unfortunately, use women to, to sell. Sorry, I mean, we use the body of women to sell products. And uh, the worst is that some of them sometimes play this role, whatever. We are in 2017. I don't understand that sometimes uh, women um, think they need to show their sorry ass to have sponsor or to be... Uh, to be famous yes. or thing like this. Yes. I, uh, I I really do not like the representation of women, nor their representativeness uh, in the media, TV yes. or publicity. Yes. Of course, th there are big differences, but because in our society today there are big differences in sport, in uh, in uh, in companies, work, whatever. Uh, of we see a lot of sports uh, from men, uh, tennis, rugby, uh, football, uh, whatever the sport is or whatever your your country is. But of course, if people are not used to see sports women on TV, mm -hmm. how they can know they don't like it? Yes. And so why they use um, the, the broadcasters, I think that's the right word, you, you don't show sports women on TV. Yeah. It is it is a struggle of, of every day and in all areas, unfortunately. And do you think it's improved? So for the years that you were professional, did you see a change? It's better. Uh, it's better because uh, women uh, started to, to be fed up with, with that, I think. Uh, not only in sport, in quite every area. Yeah. And um, we just if you remember that not so many years uh, women are allowed to to take their, their own money from the bank, they are allowed to vote, yes. <laughs> they are allowed to uh, lots of things. Yeah. I mean, a, a, and even today, not in all the countries in, in the on the world in the world. Yeah. So, of course, things are 
better and better, and but we are still not in uh, the same. The, the, that's not the right word, but in the same level. Yes. Uh, but I, I, I think, and I'm sure, everything will be better for the next generation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so. What tips would you give to a young woman athlete who's wanting to get to the top and particularly dreaming of the Olympics? <laughs> well, uh, it's a big question. Dream, dream of, of the Olympics is easy, but because when you love sport, you, you, that, that's the most important uh, sport event in the world, in the planet <laughs> that we are. Yeah. We, Anyway, in the world, dream of Olympic, so it's easy, but important in the process also. Now, dream that you can succeed in the is in, in the Olympic is is the first step because you are in a more in an active way, if I can say that. Yes. I mean, we all think people uh, we see in TV are exceptional, yeah. but that's not totally true. Not all of them, I mean, most of the time, the, the thing is that those people just understand that everything is possible. They just need to, to they decided to try. At the moment, they decided to try. Yeah. And they understand everything could be possible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So dream and go on. <laughs> <laughs> Stay motivated, yes. <laughs> And so what lessons can we learn in business by looking at the discipline and the dedication seen in sport? There are skills, uh, yes, skills that I use uh, at work from my sport life. Yes. The first thing is uh, to know how to plan your career. Like we know how to plan in the first place for, for, for a competition or a world championship or something. So yes, yeah, to to plan to plan your career uh, from today until uh, the, the goal with all the the steps between uh, today and this um, and this goal about failure too. I can notice in business world that we need to understand what failure really provides. Your, your first time, <laughs> your first time to tr to try bicycle. I don't know if the, the expression is right, yes. but your first time you, you tried bicycle when you were young, I'm sure you didn't succeed the, the first time, right? No, I fell <laughs> Maybe off you, a lot of times. Uh, what? I fell off a lot of times. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, you, you felt. And uh, maybe uh, one of your parents or friends helped you or wh whatever. But so, why we are so focused on our goal and we can't understand that sometimes failure is also a really good thing to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the plan, failure, and the other one are motivation, confidence, dedication, and determination. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Follow the plan, not the movement. Yes. That's important also. Yeah. And so when you decided to change careers, were there many options for you? Because it's a, a big change from being a professional athlete to go into business. And did, yes, people, did people expect you to do something connected to sport? Yes, it's, it's easy. I think it's easy or sometimes it's a choice, but most of the time it's in my opinion, of course, it's easy to that after your sport career, you you work as a coach, uh, yes. especially if you are a man, for your sport federation. Um, in 2012, 2012, with my team, we tried to play, to qualify for London Olympic Games, but uh, we didn't succeed. Yeah. I made uh, I made a break and prioritized during two years my after fencing career. Yeah. I didn't want to work as a coach or in my federation. Yeah. That was in fact at this moment I really began to integrate the digital world and so to learn and learn and learn. Yeah. Before uh, before that I had more opportunity in 
before that. Uh, I had more import- opportunity in, uh, but in sport world. I mean, uh, as sport marketer or sport communicator or things like this. Yeah. And in fact, I, I, I've decided uh, to um, to open more options to me, and especially to create or find a job I will I will love and. Usually, people people around us, I mean, around at least, uh, expect that we work in sports yes. world, or as a salesperson or other jobs people imagine sport people are good at. Yes, I don't know why, <laughs> but, but yes, it's, there are a lot of athletes when we talk together. That yes, uh, people around them and people around us expected. It. For, for me and for a lot of us, uh, of us, uh, that uh, we worked for federation or as coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, well, people just automatically expect it, or that you become a, yes. a sports presenter on television or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. I know. Yeah. And uh, we, we are not. Uh, uh, I think we, we don't. Uh, we didn't born athletes. And we didn't bomb a uh, coach or w- w- whatever. Yeah. We, we, we can decide of what we want. Of yeah. course, we sacrifice a lot of our life for yeah. our sports career, but maybe we would like to do something else. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you are listening to Anna Letitia Cook at Women Up Radio. And I know you are very passionate about startups and tech and big data, and that's the field yeah. you've gone into. So, what created your interest in this field, and when did you start to consider this as a new career? I'm, I'm very passionate about digital in general, in fact, yeah. yeah. And what we can do all together with it. What I, what I really want is that one day. Uh, digital help more and more the world to to feel better and be better. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, um, AI, um, artificial intelligence in surgery, yeah. or data to to help people find a job. Yeah. Some years ago, during my sport career, I had um, a big injury. Uh, my life uh, has changed from top to nobody to no more money from my club or to nothing from my federation etc etc mm-hmm. yeah yeah a day you are for the star i hate this, this this expression but i don't know how to say it in english sorry about that and uh, the other day you are just nobody yeah i understood that i need to think about my career my career after sport and that I would also have difficulties uh, uh, in my life if I wouldn't if I uh, continue like this. Yes. So, as I love digital, but I had no legitimacy to working. I started to to tweet. I started to blog, but to tweet, but with with a plan. Yes. Uh, so few few years ago, yes, I started to to blog about sports, blog about digital in sport after I talked to everything in digital. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, when I was working in startup, I was tweeting about startup in, di- in digital, etc., etc. Digital was an opportunity for me to change my career after sport. That's, that's something possible for every, everybody, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, because I know there's a lot of talk about women in tech and women in STEM. So, in your opinion, what options are open to women in the, the field of digital? The, the world is amazing. It's really a good, this world, I mean, digital, the world in general, but this world is amazing. It's, it's, it's really a good opportunity to, 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 change, to change your work, yeah. to, for people to be recogni- recognized in their work or other things. We are now in a world that people don't uh, usually practice one job from the beginning until their retirement. Is that yes. the right word? Yes. Okay. The society changes. People's behavior too. 
there's not only one way to, to succeed in your digital world. Yeah. Whatever if you are young, old, a woman, a transgender, a CEO, or if you have a handicap, or if you love culture, whatever, that, that changes nothing in reality. We, we have, I mean, we, we have this in every part of our life today. It's in almost every project from the beginning to the end of the day. So um, the, the options are just everything you want, the options are. If you decided you want to do something in digital, you can do it whatever who you are and where you've come from. That sounds great. I know it, I find it fascinating. And because I'm, I mean, I don't work in it and I don't know much about it, but the little that I do know, I'm very interested in. Um, and okay. everybody thinks at my age, because I'm what they call mature, um, so they uh -huh. think that I would be against things like that because I'm too old. But I think it's wonderful. And the, the possibilities and the way it makes you more efficient and it makes your life yeah. easier, that's what I think is great. And I never understand why people resist change to something that's uh, more apps or more crazy. software or more digital because it just makes everything so much easier <laughs> but that's my opinion. so so tell us about your career in tech and digital how did you start what are you doing and you know what what do you like about it today i work in um in startups specializing data we, we provide uh, real-time and contextual data intelligence to your business. Um, I mean, we study your behavior yeah. in all connected connected areas, not in the Google way, in Google way. So you, it's part of to steal your your data, but in to to dream data, we we don't track you or something like this. Mm -hmm. So this startup is open field. In the in the startup, I'm uh, a digital project manager first. Yeah. I'm a social media strategist yeah. and a junior growth hacker second. It's it's really a good, a great company. We have young, old, around 30, 50, or whatever. We have people from different countries. Yeah, it's 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 really nice. And. In what direction do you think it will advance for, for tech and digital? Do you think everything will become more and more technology? Or what, what do you think uh, in the future? If I think, yes, I think it will have more and more digital in uh, our world. But, but when we understand that digital can be something really big with artificial intelligence, with, with uh, big data, with uh, whatever you want. We, we started, I mean, all people in the digital world, we, we started to create a lot of things and a lot of things that we really don't, in fact, care about <laughs> every day. And at the moment, they also understand that, okay, maybe we can and we have to to make more humanity <laughs> in yeah. that digital world. Because, yes, uh, robots, that's nice, that's funny. Intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, that's nice, that's important, okay? But we are not robots, we are humans. So, yes, uh, we will have more and more digital in this world, but now I think we understand that we need to take the right, the right way to... Yes. To improve digital, for to, to change the world. Well, when yeah. you 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 have um, um, I don't know the, the English word, the climate. Yes. You you can use big data to to change something about climate, to for people to have work, for for lots of good things. So, yes. Yes. I think we understand now that we have to also change the way we understand digital in our in our life. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. And so what do you enjoy most about digital and where do you find are the greatest challenges? Greatest challenges? Oh, I'm, I'm excited because of the, the innovations. We have uh, the possibility to have um, truly true innovation in whatever uh, domain in, in, my, in my startup. We, we can feel with, uh, with the, the data in real time. That's something incredible. I mean, we have a computer and we can, we can see some points moving on this computer because that's people just moving in a mall. Yeah. That's something really innovative. We, we, also about this, this startup, we are young, but I know we are growing, we are, we are going to grow, to grow soon. Uh, we, we need it for us, for our clients and partners like Microsoft Corp. Mm -hmm. And um, if we take too much time to grow, we will disappear or we'll be bought by a big company. Mm -hmm. in, w what I really like in this digital world is that you don't need to take so many times to, to do something. Mm -hmm. When you decided to, 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 to change something, I mean, in the world, or just in your company for first, you, you can change it. You can find a way to change it and you, you do not absolutely need to, to wait for so long time to do it. Yeah. And if so, nobody has already do something, yeah. you can create something that all the people will uh, use to, to improve their products. Or yeah. the, the digital world is uh, it's really about innovation for me. And yeah. that's, that's what I'm really excited about, in fact. Yeah, I know that's fabulous. So, so what advice would you give to a woman who wants to enter into this field? People are used to say that the digital world is awful for, for women. Of course, I can understand uh, why they mean that. But I'm coming from the sport world, you know, <laughs> the world <laughs> where women need to too many times to wear a really, really, really small skirt to exist then, <laughs> or a world where TV doesn't show us because they decided that they will not have TV audiences or yeah. um, other, other nice things, we will say. To, to answer to, to the question, yes, it, it's, not, it's not a nice world, but we live in this world, in fact, in society, I mean, not yeah. especially digital. Digital or not, this is our, our world. Yes. Uh, big companies, and I think the worst is that big companies don't try to change the perception of all that. And that's really pity because they could change or help changing the world, the perception of this world. Yeah. Uh, I'm, when I'm talking about big companies, uh, I don't know, Twitter or Facebook or whatever. If, if you want to work, about my advice is if you want to, to, to work in this world, um, know as, as soon as possible what you really want to. After it, it identify people to follow, yes. people, I mean, uh, blogs to, to read, people to follow on Twitter, get closer to women club, why yeah. not? Yes. Uh, it's not an obligation, but it could help. Yeah. And especially you, you need to have a good antivate if you really want to be a um, CEO of, of Google, for example. Could be better. <laughs> your, um, your family, but not only your family anyway. Have also people you can count on. Yeah. I know it's the right expression in English. Um, when, when you have all that, for me, there's, there's nothing you can't really do. Yeah. You know, at the moment, of course, you know, at the moment, you could share sexism reflection, of course. In the digital world, like in other areas, there are, um, how do you say that? Never mind it, man, but that's, that's just life, in fact. Yeah. So, yes, at the moment, you could share sexism reflection. You know that you could also not having a promotion, uh, not because you are not qualified enough, but because you are a woman, it could happen. It's not every time, but sometimes, yes, it could happen. Yeah. Or, okay, you, you know 